Okay. Hope everybody's on the line and uh, welcome uh, to uh, our Lean Manufacturing Five Axis Machining uh, webinar this morning. Uh, I know it was uh, an effort for you to take some time out of your day, but I think it's going to be worthwhile for you. Uh, my name is Jim Parvanis. I'm account manager with VMH International, and uh, the applications engineer is going to be doing the presentation. The majority of it today will be Tim Banks. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, who VMH International is, and Tim, if you'd like to progress to the next one, thanks. Uh, we're located in St. Louis. We have offices all throughout the United States, and primarily we're focused on Siemens uh, software solutions, whether that be NX Cam, uh, when, you know, uh, uh, the CAD part of it, uh, anything that is Siemens uh, that's part of VM International. Uh, we offer uh, different products also, but today we're going to uh, focus right on Siemens. Uh, we're a very, very big reseller for Siemens, and we cover uh, globally all over the United States, and we also implement and help people with uh, Team Center also. And we're the only ones that have Team Center in the cloud at this point uh, in, in association with, with Siemens. Now we're a global company, we're all over the world, so uh, if you have offices in any place, uh, we can support you. Uh, we supply training worldwide on Siemens products, either NX or a Solid Edge. So we're down in Mexico, we're in China, uh, in India, also with association with a company called Mindtree. Now what we're going to go about today is uh, uh, you're going to learn a little bit about five-axis machining, and it's not just only for impellers. <clears throat> Excuse me, when when, when five-axis uh, first came out, it was uh, heavily in the manufacturing. If you did tur turbine blades in the aircraft industry, uh, and it was very expensive. You're looking at a small five-axis machine back 15, 20 years ago was probably around $2 million. So you know, there was a lot of justification on why should I get this machine. If it can help me, you know, how am I going to, uh, raise prices to go ahead and purchase this machine. Today, those machines are are, are a lot less in, uh, expensive. It allows you to do a lot more than a three-axis machine, even with with simple geometry parts that require multiple setups. So, well, a little bit of history on on uh, the competitiveness in these machines. Uh, originally, NC came out in 1950s uh, by the Air Force. It was uh, Really, they wanted a way to be able to do aircraft parts, uh, so they came out with a, a, a gave something like $20 million to develop this technology. Uh, in 1968, uh, there was 14,000 machines in the United States. They could be anything from five or three axis. They were mostly three axis mills and lathes and wire EDM and so on. Uh, and then you might be asking yourself, why weren't these more used in the industry? until like the late 1970s, and that's when the boom of people starting to buy these machines. Uh, and, and number one, I'll tell you, is competitive. Uh, one shop goes and buys it. Uh, they find out they'll be able to uh, do, do parts and produce them more quickly, and then the competitors are at a disadvantage because they're manually cranking handles. So it's the same thing with five-axis machines. When you look at look at five axis machines, the first thing you, you might visualize is turbine blades or impellers, something very complex if there's no other way to machine it. We're going to go through today is to show you the benefit of doing five axis uh, over three axis, but you know, you do it most likely in even five axis applications, there's three axis done along with it. So a three axis machine you know, it's not used that that much in people that have geometries that'll help them uh, to not have to fixture over and over again or do setups. So that's the great benefit of the technology. Also, you can use shorter tools. Uh, you don't have to have long tools that hang out. Could you, you could have tool deflection. Uh, you could have myriads of other problems in which slow down the manufacture of that part. So we're also going to go through the best practice and what lean manufacturing is all about. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Tim, and he's going to go through uh, and give you some good information 
on how uh, Live Access could benefit your your, your company. Thank you, Jim. So you right in. Thank you. So we're going to start off with, as Jim mentioned earlier, that five-axis machining, it is great for the really complex parts, especially in the aerospace industry, such as your impellers and turbine blades. But even for general or a little, I'm not going to say simple, but a little easier parts, such as small molds like this, it can be five-axis machining can be used to cut down your machine time up to 40%. So we are looking at on a toolpath tilt, you, if you have three axis machine capabilities now and you've already made toolpaths in your program, you can easily convert them to five axis toolpaths using NX's toolpath tilt. With this, there's a little wizard inside NX where you can just take your toolpath and set it at any angle. And with that, you can get the edges and blends at a better angle to use and get a better finish on your tools. And we will do an example inside NX. Here is a simple mold part. And if we look at the three axis machine, machining of it, you can see just general straight up and down. It takes, it gets as best as it can on the blends. But again, being three axis, it won't get the best surface finish on the complex parts, and we can look at it. It took 26 minutes to do a part like that. If we do the toolpath tilt, we can be able to see move it a little bit that it still does the three axis when needed, and then when we try to get around those little corners and blends, it makes the little tilt to get the better surface finish and we'll speed it up. And with this with this little tilt, it actually takes longer just because you're still using the same tool, the same long tool and paths, you're just adding the little tilt to it. So in this, it takes 33 minutes compared to 26. But if we do full-blown five axis, like programmed well, on a five axis machine, you can see it is tilting and moving around on all five axes pretty much the entire time. And with this, we can use a shorter tool with the angles. And with that, we can have a longer tool life and less chatter with a shorter tool. And then it's more rigid, so it won't break. And with that as well, with a five axis machine, let's say with this tool, with this part, if you want to, sorry about that. If we want to, Let's say machine this part right here. It might it might be better to set up this part on its angle like this and machine it again. With five axis machine, you only need to set up your part once and then you can get any angle you want on it as opposed to a three axis machine. If you have a complex geometry, you will need to set up your part multiple times on each of its sides and then zero off your part over and over again which takes a lot of time and money because if you have a giant part, that a piece that weighs 1,000 plus pounds, you can't just pick it up like you would a cell phone, flip it over and keep machining. It takes a lot of time and money to set up your part, zero off the machine again, and keep on going. And with that five axis that we just did, it, only, it took 17 minutes compared to the 26 on the three axis part. So even on a simple mold like this, we saved nine minutes. And if you're talking about machining a lot of these parts or machining this in a larger assembly, you're saving a large amount of time and money. So we'll go back. And another thing that is, this is new in NX 8.5. If we have a little hole or a space in the wall, there are ways to get around it or go through it as opposed to an NX8, you would have to go up close to the wall, have your tool part back off, and then go around it. So if you look at another example, with NX8, zoom in right here, 
tool comes around and you see it has to ignore the wall and come back around. This this requires even more steps and less accurate surface finish around that area. But what we can do with what's new in NX 8.5 is we can either use a cut or a step over at different increments to come around and then go through. As long as it touches the wall on each side, it can just skip over that blank area and continue on, which leads to quicker machining time and it'll be a better surface finish on these edges next to that wall. And here are the different tools you can use with that. There's either the cut or step over. And with the step over, you can either do it, you can, you can have a step up as well to go over that to get the entire side, or you can keep on moving straight through it. Also, another benefit of the five axis machine is on blends and chamfers in the corners of, let's say, pockets. You can easily get to them with the five axis machine as opposed to a three axis where you'll have to keep doing different cuts on it at different angles and increments to get the perfect, as close as you can to the perfect cut, whereas on a five axis, it is a lot easier to do. And here are some new functions in 8.5, NX 8.5, that will further help your five axis machining. This one, you can have your, your cut step, you can change, in the old NX, it was defaulted to 100, your cut step, but in the new one, you can change your, your, your last cut to whatever you want to make it a very fine finish at the end for a much better surface finish. And for small, uh, highly curvature parts, you can see on here that there are little dots that signify where the toolpath needs to go through. And with NX 8.5, you have the ability to manually insert extra points on highly complex or highly high curvature parts, regions of your part to make sure that it's a highly accurate machining of it. And with that, it also reduces the generation time as it goes through the part. And as Jim was saying, 5-axis is also great for all you aer aerospace guys out there with turbine blades, impellers, and there are also some great turbo machinery enhancements in 8.5, including with stepovers when making your turbine blades, machining those out, the stepovers were modified to measure the perpendicular to pass out between the blades, so it takes less passes, but deeper passes that are less with the five axis machining, which also gets reduces your machining time. And if you would like on extremely difficult parts such as impellers and turbine blades, you can manually control your tool angle and alignment while going through the cut on your either the blade or the finish on the blend at the bottom. You can manually, manually control your angle and while tilting the tool you can see which, at what angles it will, it will touch, that it, where it will cut and what angles it will hit the tool, hit, hit the machine, excuse me, hit the part that is being made such as the impeller and it'll turn red if there is an error or if it will gouge your parts. So we can take a look at a more difficult part, such as, here we go, such as an impeller. And as you can see, this one here, it also, we were talking about the blends. There's a a better blend finish in NX 8.5, in which it, it takes what you can manually insert what angle and start point you want to be at for your blends. As that goes through. So as Jim said, uh, five axis machining, it is great for difficult parts such as turbines and impellers, 
but it can, it can also be used for I'm not going to say more simple parts but for with less geometry less difficult geometry parts as those turbines and impellers because even if it's a simple what could be done on a three axis machine if you do use your five axis machine and five axis capabilities in NX 8.5 you have the ability to cut down your machining time as we saw we cut off about 35 percent of our time even on that part at the beginning as well as a better surface finish being able to use all the angles and tilts that we have for the five axis machine as well as without having to set up your part on different axes you save time and set up as well as with the shorter tool you have the ability to make deeper cuts and deeper passes so with less passes and less cuts you save time as well and with that I'm going to throw it back to Jim Okay, great, Tim. Great, uh, great job. Uh, I'd like just to go over a, a few things on the, the machining part that, um, that that needs to be, uh, you know, expounded upon, and, and that is that it's just not for turbine blades. So if you have a part that has multiple setups, or you have like ramps into the part or angles into the part that have to be done with a ball nose or a bull nose end mill. You know what you're doing. What you're going to be able to do on those ramps is use a flat tool. You know, do a tool change and just do a flat end mill where you don't have to do finishing. It's not saying that you can't cut anything with a with a three axis machine. It's just saying it's more efficient. Uh, you can use different types of tools. You don't have to hang out there with long extended tools, uh, and then what, which results in a better part finish. So a majority, a lot of the time, uh, someone will spend uh, polishing the part and getting it down to where the customer wants that type of finish uh, by hand. So you're going to eliminate maybe 70 to 80 percent of hand finishing by doing this and making small step overs and doing it with five axis. So a, a part that you'd look at and say, well, that's a pretty simple part. You know, we could just uh, you know throw that on the on the machine. You don't even think about well what, what could it be done with it doing it in five axis so just in that little demonstration that you saw the time savings in doing three axis over five axis and there's no there's no difference much into the, the programming of it you don't have to know that no much more in order to program into five axis the only thing that you have to look for when you're doing five axis is the limitations of your tilt of your machine also to make sure that there is no collisions with the head anywhere, and that all is identifiable through uh, other parts of the software, like virtual machines. So, uh, all in all, you know the savings is 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 quite dramatic doing even simple parts with five-axis machines. At IMTS, there was a machine that had a turbine blade, uh, much like or an impeller, like the one you're seeing on the screen right now in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, that was done in 55 minutes out of aluminum. You know, it was probably about a, uh, a foot diameter and about eight inches high. So that's how quick the five axis can do, and then do it in one in one setup. So you know, you're eliminating setups using smaller tools. You're going to get a better surface finish. So in in not only the machining time a reduction, but the, but the hand finishing also. So if you're into molds, depending on what you're doing, uh, what part that you're going to replicate? If it's a clear part, you're going to have to have a high polish onto that, onto that tool. So that's a lot of uh, hand finishing time. Ends our webinar for today. We'd like to thank you all for, for attending. Uh, look at our website uh, www.bmhinternational.com, and look at our events and training area. Uh, we'll be able to. Uh, You'll be able to look at when the training and when our next webinars are. Uh, and also, if you have any recommendations of things that you'd like to uh, have us do a webinar on, uh, feel free to uh, contact us for that also. And once again, thank you for attending.